Did you know that when the United Nations released its latest index of happiest countries, all the Scandinavian countries ranked among the top 10? Now Scandinavia is frequently cited as an example of far-left policy prescriptions. However, is that really true? Is the access to free healthcare, education, and premium benefits for all Scandinavian citizens due to the fact that they're in fact a socialist democracy? Stay with us to find out and remember to push the subscribe button. American politicians like Bernie Sanders have often pointed to Denmark rather than China, Cuba, or Venezuela when talking about transforming America. So what is it that's done differently here? Well, there's a catch. Scandinavian socialism only exists in the Marxian imaginations of radical progressives. It's a chimera encased in an illusion within a dream. In reality, the economies of Denmark and other Scandinavian countries are capitalist rather than socialist. They rely on the free market to generate the funds that support their extensive welfare system. According to the Heritage Foundation's 2021 Index of Economic Freedom, Denmark ranks 10th in the world in terms of economic freedom. The United States ranks 25th. It's important to note that Denmark has long relied on the functioning of capitalism. According to the Danish-based Center for Political Studies, Denmark was a prosperous country in the late 19th and early 20th centuries while adhering to a free market philosophy. However, it introduced socialism after World War II, resulting in a severe economic downturn by the 1980s. As the Danish economy shifted gears, subsequent governments implemented reforms, such as reduced benefits, partial privatization of pensions, and fewer regulations. A plan to partially socialize industry through wage earner funds was scrapped. Denmark has always maintained a broad-based welfare system funded by heavy taxes on all citizens, including the middle class, which bears a far greater burden than its American counterpart. According to the Center for Political Studies, low-income Danes pay a marginal tax rate of 56%, while the middle class pays a rate of 57%. Furthermore, there's a 25% VAT on the sale of all items, as well as additional taxes on coffee, beer, and chocolate. Strong unions are an essential component of the Nordic model. Approximately 30% of the population is employed in the public sector. According to Eric Angheim, a Norwegian analyst, Scandinavian countries have sectoral bargaining, which means that unions exist for specific jobs rather than specific companies. A workplace may have several unions representing various types of workers. In Scandinavia, you choose the union you want, Engheim says. Unions have learned to work together, giving them bargaining power over wages and hiring practices. The government's generous welfare system, job retraining, and relocation assistance reinforce the commitment to cooperation. It won't be wrong to say that Nordic success is rooted in cultural rather than economic factors. For example, Sweden, Norway, and Denmark developed remarkably high levels of social trust, a robust work ethic, and considerable social cohesion with a combined population roughly equal to the greater New York City area. The Scandinavians do, in fact, pay a price for such cohesion, sacrificing diversity for security and accepting the known rather than gambling on the unknown as the more competitive United States does. Given the sharp debates and wide divisions that characterize American politics, such a Nordic model is unlikely to be adopted by Americans. Bringing Denmark's economic system to the United States would necessitate a wide range of social benefits paid for by significant taxes on both the middle class and lower classes as well as the establishment of a massive bureaucracy to administer and monitor the welfare system. The progressive's second favorite socialist country is Sweden. Its welfare system appears to have no bounds, including universal health care for all, free education from preschool to university, social security benefits such as unemployment compensation for up to 300 days, a housing allowance, pensions for retired workers, child support up to the age of 16, and compensation for those who are unable to achieve a reasonable standard of living. At the same time, Sweden is one of the richest countries in the world. Sweden, like Denmark, relies on the free market, levying a 30% capital gains tax to fund its generous welfare system. 
However, this was not always the case. Beginning in the 1970s, the government increased cradle-to-grave welfare by raising tax rates and regulating free markets. The total tax burden peaked in 1990, crushing businesses and causing unemployment to rise. According to the Center for European and Mediterranean Studies at New York University, talent and capital fled Sweden to avoid the tax burden, with furniture giant IKEA relocating to the Netherlands. Tetra, the world's largest food packaging company, has relocated to Switzerland. Sweden was the OECD's Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development fourth richest member in 1970. By 1993, after 20 years of democratic socialism, it had fallen to 11. An agitated populace demanded a change of course. Many regulations were eliminated, government spending was reduced, welfare availability was tightened, and the size of the government was reduced. Sweden has followed the capitalist path ever since, whether under liberal or conservative governments. Its current Social Democrat government has implemented several reforms that would please Ronald Reagan, such as eliminating a 5% tax on the highest incomes, partially privatizing the state employment department, and toughening up on crime. The government has allowed the private sector to play a larger role in education since the 1990s. Sweden now has over 800 private schools. Even healthcare is moving away from a monopoly held by the government. More than 40% of the 1,100 health centers are run by for-profit corporations. Private sector employees are increasingly covered by private health insurance paid for by their employers. Thus, Sweden has joined Israel, India, and the United Kingdom in discovering that socialism does not work, even in the best of circumstances. American progressives are hesitant to mention that universal welfare in Sweden is based on a universal tax system. Personal income is taxed at a top rate of 61.4%, plus a social security tax rate of 38%, with 31% covered by the employer and 7% covered by the employee. Sweden, like Denmark, has a 25% consumption tax, VAT, which disproportionately affects lower income earners. Billionaires are welcome, and there is no estate tax, which allows wealth to be passed down through generations. Just so you know, the estate tax in the United States can reach a whopping 40%. Swedes are used to tax demands. Consumption, Social Security, and payroll taxes account for 27% of Sweden's GDP, compared to 16.4% in the United States. Sweden taxes capital gains at 30%, compared to a maximum of 20% in the United States. The fact that Sweden did not take part in either World War I or World War II, both of which devastated other European countries, contributed significantly to its wealth. Norway, with a population of only 5.4 million people, is the smallest of the Scandinavian countries, but by far the richest due to its oil and gas resources. During the 80s, Norway founded the government pension fund Global, also known as the Oil Fund. The fund's assets now correspond to a whopping $230,000 for every Norwegian. The fund also owns 1.3% of all globally listed companies. Norway has a mixed economy that is part socialist and part capitalist, but it's more socialist than its Scandinavian neighbors. For example, the public sector employs 30% of Norwegians, compared with 15% of American workers. According to Norwegian analyst Eric Engheim, the Norwegian government owns 33% of the Norwegian Stock Exchange. The government owns or controls strategic industries, like oil, banks, transportation, and national defense. It is the owner and operator of universities and hospitals. Nonetheless, the Heritage Index of Economic Freedom in 2021 concluded that Norway is a secure and transparent place to do business due to its fair legal system, transparent regulations, and political stability. Whether liberal or conservative, the Norwegian government has accepted a neo-socialist arrangement that includes a mostly capitalist economy, a large public sector, high taxes, strong unions, and government ownership of critical industries, according to Angheim. Even the most radical socialists in Norway accept the role of small businesses 
and do not oppose home ownership or private property. In short, there's no such thing as Scandinavian socialism. The Nordic nation's mixed economies are only possible because of their small size, free enterprise history, cooperative spirit, relative homogeneity, and ability to blend socialism and capitalism. America is a vastly different country, many times larger, culturally diverse, politically divided, entrepreneurial, and skeptical of government. Thank you for watching right until the end. If you liked what you saw, please press that subscribe button, and don't forget to let us know your thoughts regarding this video in the comments below.